Okay, hello everybody. Um, I see a few faces in there um, as I'm scrolling that I recognize. Um, my name's Chance. Thanks for coming into my shop. Um, just to give you a, a little rundown of my the way I use my benches, um, the bench that I'm going to be showing you here, uh, let's see if I can switch this around. Um, this is my bench. And so uh, as Travis was saying, it's a Rubo style bench. And um, if you're not familiar with the Rubo style, basically um, this is called a split top Rubo. Um, and so basically the top, instead of just being one solid piece, it has this um, gap in the middle. Um, and that's really nice for several reasons. Um, one is that this bench, you know, I can disassemble it and move it. And that makes it uh, a lot lighter, obviously, um, for that. And it keeps the, the tops um, flat as well, because it's just a smaller piece that might be warping rather than a, a larger piece. Um, the other thing it does is I can run a clamp right down um, the middle of this and get clamping pressure in the middle of my bench really easily if I'm doing some sort of a glue up. Um, I'll get back to some of the specifics in a, in a second, but just to kind of give you the rundown of um, my space, I have a small, I'll just do a little pan here. I have a very small, um, you know, two car garage that is my committed um, professional, you know, works workshop. Um, and I built this bench. Um, I actually did not build this bench for this workspace. I was moving my workspace to a place in Liberty Station at one point. And so I built this bench to, um, to be there. You don't really want, I mean, some of the things I've learned, you don't really want your bench up against the wall, obviously, right? You'd love to be able to have access to all sides of your bench. I only have access to the front face of my bench here. But um, to be honest with you, it's been nice. I, I don't mind it. I have this kind of little corner um, that I work in and you can see, you know, I've got like these different um, flex shaft bits and I've got some hand tools here and whatnot and chisels on the wall. And then I've got this large tool cabinet, you know, right here that has all my stuff in it, right? So it's just all right here and um, the kind in of my little corner. This area is. And I actually, um, of these particular tools. Before I uh, had the bench, I would work on this assembly table, and I actually still do a lot of my work I on here. Keep doing that. So um, taking it off the screen completely. You, you guys see me okay? Yep, sure do. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, so basically, what this is is this is a torsion box on the top. So you can see this this maple edging around here. On the inside of this, there's three quarter inch plywood. And it's basically a large grid where there's just pieces, you know, every few inches crisscrossing and creating this very large grid with the top and bottom and then this laminate on there. And what that does is it keeps this top nice and flat. And so basically this is just a great place to assemble, you know, pieces that you're working on, just a nice surface. This is where I do up all my glue ups um, are on here. And I wax this surface and um, the glue just kind of pops right off. So it's really nice for that. And, um, you know, a lot of my work isn't traditional joinery. I do a lot of like, you can see some of my, some of my pieces over here, just in progress stuff, like weird shaped stools and, you know, curved pieces and whatnot. So often I don't need a traditional workbench in terms of holding my work for joinery. I usually have to come up with some weird way to hold the pieces. So my assembly table is great and I have full access, you know, to move around this as well. Um, I made the assembly table just a little bit shorter than my table saws so that, you know, this becomes a, a platform that I can use um, and it doesn't, you know, impede my process or anything. The other thing you'll notice is that if you look around the edge, I put threaded inserts um, around the whole edge of the, of the assembly table. And what that does is all sorts of things. I've, I've flattened slabs on here before by just screwing on pieces of MDF that are parallel to each other um, and running a router across the top. Um, this is a, a platform I use for when I'm ripping on my table saw. If I have long pieces, sometimes they would just hit right here. So I made this little platform that kind of helps the pieces ride up um, so I can rip long pieces by myself and that just bolts on. Um, and you can see here, you know, another example, this is just a little jeweler stake for cutting metal and things like that that just bolts on. So I'm able to kind of outfit the bench for um, whatever uses that I have. 
And the other thing is it's, it's really heavy. So it's got just like a ton of, you know, screws and storage and whatnot in it. And it just becomes this really beefy, you know, place to work from. So I work there, honestly, primarily. And then when I'm doing um, traditional joinery and things like that, I'll work over here and use my chisels and my hand planes and whatnot. So I kind of work between those two spaces. Um, a couple little things about this bench. I mentioned the split top on it. It's super beefy, so it's just really solid construction. Um, the expense in it is really in the materials. Uh, the vices themselves, they're not cheap. These are from Benchcrafted. Um, but if you look at vices, they're comparable to other you know, high quality vices. It's really in the material. And um, another thing you can think about is working with um, a material called LVL, which is laminated veneer lumber. Um, LVL is basically, uh, it's think of it as like plywood, except instead of doing cross laminations, they're all unigrain. So all the layers are laminated in the same direction. So you, they use them for structural beams for like large construction and things like that. And I've seen a lot of people using those um, LVL beams and cutting those up and using them for the tops of their bench, the legs, everything like that. It's super stable. You can hand plane it. Um, and it's affordable. So that's a good option too, if you're thinking about building a big bench, something large like this that takes just a ton of lumber, um, there's a lot of expense in it. A um, Couple of little features. One thing that I would highly recommend just from um, going through this process and working on a number of benches, I, the, my favorite feature of this bench is this feature right here. The front is absolutely parallel and flat with the legs. A lot of times you'll see your benches and there'll be an overhang here, right? Where the bench overhangs the legs. That is super, um, you know, unuseful. Th this being flat with the leg, now this becomes a useful surface. So I can clamp pieces directly to it. And you'll notice that the vise, it's as well, right? This is going flush. So when I'm clamping up, say a long board in here, I can clamp it up on this side and then also clamp it to this leg and everything's just flush to the table. You can't do that if your bench has an overhang in the same way. So that's been super, super useful and I love that. Um, I also really like the bench dog system. So when you're building a bench, you know, you have to think, you have to be able to hold pieces vertically, right, to work on the end of them. That's where my leg vise comes in. And then you've got to be able to hold pieces horizontally to work on the face of them and the solution here is this little vise at the end. And underneath the bench, uh, I won't try and get a good shot of it, but there's a metal plate. And basically you screw this piece of wood to the metal plate and the metal plate is moving back and forth in this metal channel. So it's really stable. And this becomes a little spot for a bench dog. So if I need to clamp something up, you know, I went ahead and made just a bunch of these bench dogs because they're, they're very simple to make. Um, it's just a little wooden spring on there. And that way, anytime I need to, uh, you know, clamp a piece up, I just pop one of these up a little bit and then put the piece of wood in there. And this has the throat to be able to tighten down. Hey, Chance, so is, this, is this horizontal, um, I'll call it the x-axis, uh, vice a chance design or is that standard no. rubo no yeah this is rubo so okay. so basically this company benchcrafted um they've got a pretty cool logo here you can see it um they what they do is they take um like old um well they're also involved it's chris schwartz's company so they're involved in lost art press as well and like old publications and whatnot but they take old designs. So these are like Rubo designs and they modernize them. So these are brand new castings and whatnot. But a lot of this stuff was done with wooden screws originally, because this is, you know, a couple centuries ago when this bench was invented. So a lot of this is done with wooden threads uh, initially. So it's kind of adapted, but no, that this is not, this bench is not my design at all. I just went through and researched benches and decided to build this one. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of the thought process behind this. I do like working with the holdfasts. So, you know, one of the things that's a little bit awkward about using a square bench dog is that you don't have round holes. So when you want to use a holdfast, um, you need to put some round holes in your bench. So I just put, you know, several in and I can always add more. 
Um, but I love, I really love working with this. And like, so if I have, let me see if I have a piece of wood around. Yeah. If I've got like a piece of wood that I want to do some chiseling in, you know, one really good way to, to hold it down is just with something like this and that locks it down and then I can work on it. Very and I'll nice. bang on it, bang on the end and then it just releases. So those are awesome. And I haven't been working with them too long, so I'm still getting used to like the process of it. But I want to make a little um, leather sock that goes over this just to protect yeah. the wood as I'm working with it because it's pretty aggressive. Um, and then there's this piece as well. This slides on a on a little triangle on the bottom here, right? And so what this is is this just supports larger pieces. If you've got a really large piece, you can put a peg in here you know, and suspend the end of it on here. And then this lifts out um, when you're not using it, if you wanna just, you know, have access to your bench. Um, another thing I can show you that I like a lot about my setup, I don't know, this is gonna be a little awkward. Because my space is small, have it so set up just for me where everything goes in a specific spot and it's kind of frustrating at times for other people. So if some, if you, any of you were to come work in my shop, you know, you'd have to put each clamp back in a specific way. It'd drive you nuts. But for me, it works out. So as an example, my, my sharpening setup is heavy and it's like up underneath this side. <laughs> so what I want to sharpen, I got to get this piece out. Right. So here's the piece. And um, I made it to fit the bench here. So it just kind of slips on. I don't know how, how well you can see that. Yeah. And then good. it moves back and forth. And so what I can do, this is made out of a material called G10, which it's basically like glass plastic. It's fiberglass resin. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it's fiberglass and, and resin glued together, but it's just really flat material, but you can route it and you can cut it on the bandsaw and you can cut it on the table saw, but it's completely waterproof. So my stones, you know, I really, this is something I really like about the bench space here is that the stones, the chisels, everything's right here. So when I want to sharpen, you know, I can bring these down. And these are a combination water stone with some ceramic. So they don't really need a lot of water. You just spritz them a little bit. And then I can, you know, sharpen really easily here, go from one stone to the next, keep my bench clean, and then just pop it out of the way when I'm done. So I really like that. It's been pretty nice. Um, as far as sharpening because you know as we all know sharpening is just some people love it I mean I, I don't hate it but um, I've definitely found that you know anything that I can do to make the process more friendly then I'm going to do it more often um, and so if I can make it real easy just to grab my my water stone and start to sharpen then I'll do it more often and <laughs> stuff stays sharp it's kind of what I've found. Chance there was someone asked if you could put the bench dog up again so that people could see it yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, here's the bench dog. Um, and, you know, I, I built these from a plan. So, uh, where did I put the plans? Oh, here's the plans. Um, I can pull these plans out and show you what they look like. They're really beautiful plans. Sorry, just bear with me for a second here. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to put the phone down just for a second. Boy, Michelle, who asked her this question, is getting her money's worth. If she's actually gonna see the plan. Yeah. <laughs> so here, here's the way the plans come. If you end up wanting to build this bench, but you can see the you know dimensions there for the bench dog, and all it is is just a a, a piece of wood, and you cut this profile out of it, and then you cut this angle, and then you glue back on another piece. So that becomes the spring but it's just two pieces of wood and um, it works out really nicely. The only trick about it is routing the mortises for them because you're not just drilling a hole. So um, you end up making a little jig and I have the jig and I can show it to you. It's um, not right at hand here, but I can get it if you want to see it. But essentially what it is is, you know, that, that piece is, is a laminate. So there's this piece, which you've cut a bunch of mortises out of, and then this cap that you glue on to kind of lock it all together. So if we go back to my bench, um, you'll see that this piece is the mortise and then this piece essentially is the cap. So those are glued together. There's the seam right there. And that makes that, um, that piece. 
So it's not difficult to do really. You just need to make a, a template for the mortises and then they're all the same. So you just lay them out and cut the mortises down that front edge. That's been wonderful. Chance, that's, that's amazing. Um, you know, it was really intriguing when you started on the far left and out of a little tiny corner, you pulled this board then turned into your entire sharpening surface. Could you, <laughs> could you do a pan from left to right and just tell us how sure. to organize above your bench? Yeah, so I, I definitely um, have a little bit of OCD, which I think helps me uh, as a woodworker. So I love organization. I kind of geek out on it. And I also, one thing I'll say is I, well, for organization, I treat it like sculpture. And what I mean by that is I do it as I go. So I'm not, I don't have like a full plan formulated from the beginning. I just, I just come over and I say, okay, I like my Fordham flex shaft. I use it a lot. I cut off little screws with it a lot and I'll do shaping with it. I want it near my bench. So I just made a little, you know, brass hook to hang it and made these little guys to hold my pieces. And, um, you know, I go crazy with it. I even put this block here. This block is just so that this flex shaft doesn't get kinked and put unnecessary pressure on it over That's, its lifetime. So this really is just so that, chance. exactly. Right? <laughs> so stuff like that, you know, you can see these are all have their own spaces. I use a lot of rollers because I'm doing a lot of veneer work. And then, you know, these, these chisels, I actually, again, this is a little bit sad, but I purchased these chisels when I was down at Liberty station um, thinking we were going to have, you know, a large woodworking program. So a lot of these aren't sharpened yet. The chisels that I've had for years are in this box. And these are the ones that I use a lot. So the, um, kind of adding to my collection in, in a way. Um, but again, this, this box um, is just to save space, you know, and it's also, if I ever move into a, a commercial space, which I'd like to do at some point, um, I can lock this box. So that's, that's nice as well. But, you know, I'll give you a great example you know, hanging your planes in your box. A lot of people will do something like this, where this is an angled platform. And I just put a little magnet there. And then that really holds the plane well. I've also seen people will hang the plane from the handle with a string, right? And then hang these. I've seen that as well. Um, but, you know, you can see this box, it changes over time because, you know, I've, as I collect tools, then I add them in here. And, you know, spokeshaves is something I've gotten more of lately. And, you know, they're all over the place. I've got some over there, some over there. There's some on the outside. You know, I just ran out of room. So it's not like this very comprehensive thing. Um, if you look at this hand plane, I was in Australia and picked up this beautiful wooden hand plane. I had no room left in my box. So, you know, I had to make this really strange little um, platform that kind of locks this plane in, in there and holds it so that, you know, it's not gonna fall out as I'm, you know, moving this around and whatnot. So that's kind of stuff I just, I really love. I geek out on it and, you know, I've got some measurement tools here and that sort of thing and layout tools and whatnot. The underside of my bench is really a mess right now and it's just a catch all right now. Um, so there's nothing special there. Chance, but. most of us would not call that a mess, okay? Yeah, for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Chance, tell us, are those LPs or are those magazines in the glass front cabinet? Those are LPs. Yeah, I do love my records. So, um, you know, I have a small collection and I get that from my dad. In fact, I built him a record cabinet for his shop um, and it's 11 feet long, two stories like this, and it's already full. So wow. he, he filled it up right away. <laughs> um, I love it. I've got a record player here. I don't have a very good um, speaker system, but I do have a record player here with a, with a cover, keeps it safe, and I do listen to my records. I love it. That's great. Yeah. Questions so. from people? <laughs> so just to oh, validate, on, folks. Uh, this is Rob. Just to validate, Chaz, you, you bought the plans for the workbench and then built it? Is that correct? Yeah, I bought everything from Benchcrafted. I'm not like sponsored by them or anything, but I do right. like them. They're, they're a good company. And I mean, it's expensive stuff. It's, it's, it's kind of the, the nicest stuff you can get. But um, the bench plans, I, the other thing I'll say, if you're, if you're interested, you should go on their website and just look. They have great information. You don't have to buy anything, but they've got like, you know, um, you can download a lot of their stuff for free. Um, in terms of like, they have mocks and vices for doing dovetails and whatnot, and all that's free. Um, 
and so yeah i go on there i think the plans were like 20 to 30 dollars i don't it, it was a couple of years ago but they weren't too bad and they're good yeah they're good plans hey, uh, chance i i'm sorry i came in a little late could you tell me again what this split part is all about in the middle of the bench yeah, yeah sure um, i really love that feature so you know it as you can imagine obviously it's lighter when you're going to move it um, and then also, you know, it's just the piece is cut in half, so it's less likely to want to twist on you as severely and whatnot. Um, and, uh, you know, it stays a little flatter. And then also I can, I can put a clamp right down through this, um, which I've done a few times for um, different things. So that just becomes kind of handy. Um, that's the idea behind it. But this, I don't I actually don't have it locked down right now. So if you want, I can show you. Yeah. Um, I can show you how this works. If I move this, if I just lift this up, it's real heavy. <laughs> As you can see. Are are you saying chance that it just rests there typically? Uh, it has bolts, but I just haven't put them on yet. Okay. Uh, just because it's, I'm, I've actually moved this thing a bunch lately, and I just drilled the bench dog holes in it. Oh, so, wow. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, like, you know, it takes me a while to finish things, but I, I actually just drilled these holes, not for bench dogs, for the, um, for the hold fasts. So I haven't bolted it back on yet. But you can see this is how it attaches. There's just a large ten in here, and then there's a mortise in the top. Um, and that way it can expand inwardly. So it always stays flush to this outside ah. edge and it's bolted here. This is an oversized hole and the screw is just a monster. So you can see here's the screw with the head. <laughs> and uh, so that's why I haven't screwed it down yet because you don't want to do that like too many times. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then, it, then it's allowed to expand a little bit towards the inside. And the same, the same thing happens on the other face. There's two large tenons. So this just keys in on those large tenons. This one's kind of strange because there's a bench dog that goes right through that, that leg. So that, oh, yeah. that part's a little weird. You get your finger in there and kind of pop it up. But, um, and here you can see the bottom of that vise. It's just locked solid. As long as you keep this thing from rusting, there's really nothing that can go wrong with it. You know? um, it's and very, very the, simple. The kit that you bought was the hardware and a plan? Is yeah. that how you did this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I bought um, the plans. Well, what I did is I, I was researching for a long time and I actually have a few of Rubo's um, reprinted books on work holding and like he has a veneer book as well. So I've liked Rubo as a designer, as a, you know, as a mind, essentially the way he thinks for a long time and then started looking into benches and whatnot and really liked his bench design. And I, what I did is I, I looked, I was on their website for a long time and I got some of their free information and was just researching. And then I bought the plan got the plan, looked at it and everything and kind of decided then to go for it. You can combo it too. And you know, in hindsight, I kind of wish I did that. I don't love the leg vice. Mm -hmm. And that's, it, it is really nice. I, I think if you ask me in a year or two from now, I'm going to say I love it. I really do. But I've, I've spent 15 years using regular, you know, European style vices that we're used to. And so for me, it's a little bit different getting used to it. But I'll tell you what, I love the split top. I love the bench dogs. I love the tail vise. Um, I love the weight of this thing. You can't move it. I mean, it's just solid. Um, so that's really nice. Um, I, you know, I love, I love a lot of the features of it. So it's, it's been a good bench uh, for me for those, things, for those reasons. Any other, other questions? questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, Brad and I have a really small garage. So we would probably have it up against the wall that, like you do. But we're also thinking about getting some casters from Rockler where you can actually lock it or kind of move it about in our garage. We, we have an association, we have to park our cars in the garage. So that's one mm -hmm. of those things where if we wanna work, we'd have to move the cars across the street and then work that way. Would that be okay to put casters on that? Uh, I don't think you'd want to. I, my, my, my opinion there is like the casters is tough, right? So. Mm -hmm the casters is a necessary evil, right? You have to have them because of your situation. And so you can adapt, but you know, you, you got to ask yourself, is this my, 
forever shop? Am I ever going to have a different shop? You know, maybe you can tackle your workbench uh, issue now and maybe you'd have another bench later. You know, I mean, I've, I've been woodworking now for 15 years and this is my first ever real bench. Um, <laughs> but I've had mobile bases and things like that. And I've worked on other people's benches and I've been at schools and had benches, but I, I, I kind of waited a long time to make this one. And, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is you, I don't know that you need it to be like solve all of your issues forever. You know, you can have a smaller bench that is mobile that's going to be really versatile for you and it's going to be great for your current situation. And then maybe later you'd, you'd go something really beefy if you feel like you need it. Um, mobile bases on a bench is you just got to be really careful that, you, you know, if you, if you want something really sturdy, obviously then um, that's going to affect that. But you talking, they have some that they like the legs completely lift down and then the caster right. is not on the floor right. at all. So yeah. what it would do is it would um, lift up the bench when you go to move it. And then when you disengage right. the casters, the bench is actually supported by its own weight on the legs uh, yeah. and, the, and the casters are not engaged. Yeah, yeah I have, I actually have seen one. I have, and they work quite well. There's brackets that you can put on the workbench. So you just need one set of casters. And right. you put them on to move, take them off when you don't need them, and it, it works great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I, you can totally great. do that. You know, the other thing, the other thing about your um, smaller bench is, you know, I, I have like a six foot bench, and 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 hey, of it is just full of crap, you know. And yeah. and I wish that I had made a four foot bench, and that would have been good for like ninety nine percent of what I do. Mm -hmm. So that's just another thought if you. Well, I mean, everybody's is got a different situation. So that's yeah. really tough to kind of blanket it with. This is what you should do. I mean, it, no, I, right. I would say, I would say if you can hold out a little bit longer and like, you know, take a longer time making the decision, that's probably a good idea. Cause you see how you adapt and, and work, you know, with your, with your piece. Again, this bench was made not necessarily out of a need in my process, but because of a move. And so, you know, that's kind of strange. But I think it's better to do it out of a need in your process. You know, it's like I need a space, I need it to be mobile, and you know, you start to um, right. narrow down what what it is you're building. Other questions? What did I do here? I have uh -oh. a question. Hello. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, so one of these benches, it's like a big investment as far as like time, money, you know, space in your shop. Um, for something dedicated for hand tools. If you're looking to kind of just start out and get your feet wet with hand tools, you know, maybe you got a plane or two, you know, some chisels and stuff. What, what kind of thing do you recommend as far as like tools and projects to start out with? Um, well, one thing that that kind of made me think of, and it, I don't know that this is going to answer your question, but a, a really good way to get going if you're if you're looking to hold down work for hand tool joinery and stuff, and you don't have a bench um, necessarily, or you don't want a big bench, is look into Mox and Vices, the M O X S O N Mox and Vice, and it's basically just two large pieces of wood with. Um, well, I have the threads here somewhere. Um, I don't know what I did with them, but it's basically just two large pieces of wood with two screws and you can clamp it to any surface. And now you have this amazing vice. So um, I, mm. and the beauty of it is it's super simple. It's small, it's affordable. And the best thing is when you get to the point where you have a, a, a bench that you're using that has vices and whatnot, the mox and vice will still be useful for you for doing wider pieces and doing dovetails and like elevating your work um, a little bit higher when you're working on it. Um, so I, I always recommend that to people who are just starting out and thinking about, you know, what can we do with our small space and with our limited um, resources in terms of projects and stuff. That's, that's a tough, that's a tough thing to answer because, you know, you could be a whittler your whole life and you don't need any right. tools other than a couple little knives. So mm -hmm. that's tough. And that, that's more interest based. Right. Um, but I would really say, you know, really look into the mox and vice especially if you're not familiar with it um it's great you can do so much with it there's a guy in australia burn chanley is a chair maker he uses them to hold all of his chair parts when he's when he's you know working on them i mean just really versatile vices you know that that question was almost set up a setup matt on your part for a transition to the next speaker um chance thank you man uh, that was, oh, you can tell, I, I have i have this uh this way of gauging interest 
on people's parts by how intensely they stare into the screen. Yeah. There were a lot of people staring intently at your bench, okay? <laughs> there we go. All right. <laughs> I have a short question. Go ahead, Paul, before you uh, This is Paul. Um, in lieu of a nice, big, heavy workbench, have you ever, like, sandbagged uh, for mass on lighter weight tables? Does that work at all or not? It does work. I, I, yeah, I, I have done it before um, when I've been involved in, um, at schools and we, we move benches outside for bending and whatnot and we'll sandbag them. And um, it does work. You just got to make sure the structure is, is, is sturdy. It doesn't have to be heavy. The sandbags make it heavy, but it has to be sturdy. So you're talking about, you know, wide boards that, that um, would be like quote unquote apron or stretchers that are going to lock this thing in. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be screwed together and whatnot. Um, something you can look at if you're interested in something like that is look at like ceramic artists, people who are working with clay because they're um, doing a lot of like hand building, throwing the clay, moving the clay. So they need a bench that's really sturdy, but they don't do any joinery or anything. So their benches are usually screwed together, sheets of plywood and then weighted. Um, Got it. And All right. it works great. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Chance, that was awesome. Uh, thank you very much. Um, no at this point, then we're going to go from the one Thanks, that Chance. everybody dreams of, your no bench chance, to now something that everybody can practically have, <coughs> which is what Jim's going to show us. So, uh, Mike, Jim, you want to take it away? We're ready. We're ready. We are ready. Let me uh, get get the start of the show in the. Hey, uh, you guys the, are at the shop. Okay. <laughs> Well, my shop is not near as OCD as someone else's <laughs> shop is. I have a problem here. I never put anything back in the same spot twice. Um, the question about sandbags is a good question. Every, at the fair, every sand, the bench up there at the fair is sandbag. So it does work and has worked for a number of years. So merely cheap sandbags work. A uh, couple things. Hi to everyone. I haven't seen many of you for a long time. I hope we're uh, uh, visiting and calling our friends in the club uh, to make sure everybody's doing all right. We, maybe some people need help. I know I've called several people in the club and they've called me. So if everybody takes some time to call somebody in the club and uh, kind of, it's nice to have someone call and talk about the club and the activities and the future. So, uh, so if we're delicate, you know, everybody calls a couple of people, then everybody will get a call. So that's one pertinent thing. Just for the record, we love Uncle Jim too. Look at your sign. There's a story there. Can't tell you that. Um, mine's a little bit different than what chances are. It is mine's a much smaller bench, and I found this on the winter. Hey, Mike, we can barely hear Jim. Is there something you can do to? Uh, yeah, we're this. trying to get, well, how about now? Keep yelling, Jim. It's okay. Okay, I'll keep yelling. <laughs> I found this design on the internet, and uh, it's a small bin. Uh, the reason I started looking is uh, several of the students in our toy class have very limited space to do work, and I came up with this idea to make one of these benches, and this is completely portable. You can put it in the back of your car, Go work at the shop, go work at other sites, bring the class with you. And it really does a good job. And there's not that much expense here. Um, the, the biggest expense is this little vice. I think it was 40, under $20 at Lowe's. Uh, if you go online uh, and look up Japanese mini workbenches, the gentleman does about a half hour uh, process of building one of these things. And the only thing you really have to know is the size of this top. From that, you could cut your wood any way you wish. And it's an easy process to do it. Um, I'll give you an example of some of the things you can do with it. Uh, it's on a workbench with a couple of C-clamps. And I've got a piece of wood here. And as you can see, it works pretty good, especially for the plane sharp. Doesn't move, doesn't do any of that. Um, and it's easy to do. Uh, this is a piece of cherry. 
uh, you can glue it together or come up with a neat piece of eight quart wood. You can do it out of countertop, anything. And uh, it really works good. Hey, uh, you can, Jim, it looks as though you can clamp it front to back there as you've just done. Can you show us yeah. some of the other ways? You can cut this way, do the same thing. Yeah. Doing cutting you might what, wish to do, uh, drilling. Um, uh, some of the ladies in our shop are kind of challenged with their height and they were looking for something and this is what- Who would that be, Jim? I have <laughs> no- Is that you, Marty? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we want names now, huh? Mm. <laughs> no, but the, <laughs> the gentleman was saying that, and Sam was bringing it up too, Sometimes people, space is limited, and you have to put cars in the, the, the garages and stuff in your little shops. This is something you could theoretically put on a patio table and work outside. And I, occasionally, I've done just that. Just moved it outside, be in the sun, in the wind, and in and, and, and a nicer day, it's really nice to get out of the shop and not have to breathe the dust and stuff. So um, in the future, uh, if people really want to build this thing, I'm uh, willing to uh, come up with a set of plans and a material list. And that way we can, uh, you can do it in your shop. And hopefully when we get our back to our shop, maybe we'll even have a one day work, work project and we'll build a bunch of these. Uh, I have the material to do one more. If somebody's interested, give me a call. Um, hey Jim, can you tell us uh, the lowest shoulder on the front of that unit is obviously for the C clamps to hold it in place. You yeah. have another shoulder though on either side of the bed itself. Can you tell okay, us yeah, you, can, you can do something else with that too. You notice there's a stop here. Uh, I'm going to turn the camera a little bit. Hang on. There you go. The back. Okay, good. And if you, and this is set up so it's per parallel, so you can actually edge yeah. a board. Nice. And, and okay. Squared it by hand. But then you get the this one and then the edge squared. So it, yeah. and you can do it left or right handed. You can do, uh, I don't know if I showed you or not, but I had a one of those crazy planes that, where'd it go? You do backwards, a Japanese plane. And it does a good job too. See you now. That's pretty cool, Jim. <laughs> hey, he's back! You would be amazed at how jealous I am of the tools he's got over here. <laughs> he doesn't pay attention. Thank you. He's going to go away. Hey, um, Jim, one, one more question is, can you maybe detach it so we can see what the size of it really is if we had to pack it away? Tiny. That's nice. <laughs> and, 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 you, and you you tend to bring it around and you use it. And it, it, like I said, if you're stuck in an apartment or a condo, this is ideal. You know, it That's brings so it up. That's so sweet. It's not as cheap. I mean, I have a workbench too. Not as as nice as Chance as does. <laughs> uh, I do have a set of those plans for Chance's bench, and, and eventually I will make one. But right now I'm stuck with what I have, one of the Palomar ones. And hopefully, maybe Palomar will come back. And maybe we can have a workbench class someday. Um, any other questions? Come on, people. Never, nobody should let Jim off easy ever. Okay. Just okay. So for the email, there was something in the email saying that if there was enough interest that you'd put together a kit. Do you think? Yeah, I'll put together a kit. Yeah. All right. It'd be appreciated. Very much. It, 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 like I said, the most yep. expensive. Sounds good is right here and this is just if you guys know me i have it a way of coming up with stuff <laughs> yeah i wouldn't say steal or find it or something but i i often <laughs> trade things and um so the biggest piece is that wood and you can make do you, do you like uh cherry pie <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yes Hey, Jim, I want you to know that in the chat here, there are people saying things, I'm interested in making one. I want one. I need one. This is the kind of feedback you're getting, okay? So you had it asked. Well, I better start that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let me deal with the little, the, how busy I am. Um, 
<laughs> I might get killed for this. I hope my wife doesn't see it. My wife hasn't left the house in 10 weeks. So the honeydew list is quite long. And I'm at about 1,200 foot of uh, tongue and groove, three quarter inch oak flooring I put in. Now we're moving rooms and uh, lighting and drywall and uh, painting now. And so I've been busy for 10 weeks and the list looks longer than it was before. Uh, so if anybody has an idea how to get me out of this house. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, my girl can no, I'm just over here. <laughs> Uh, I would say if, if you don't have time to put together a full kit, if you had just a set of drawings and maybe some links to the hardware where you got it, uh, I'd be willing well, to. The hardware is, is the little vise. And if you get on the uh, or YouTube, uh, you'll see a picture of the vise and he gives the actual model number. And it, it's at Lowe's and it's, I think it's around 20 bucks or so. That's I great. mean, you can go a fancier vise, but this one is ideal. And I just went with the same one he uses. And like I said, you too. And the, it, it, the guy even sells a set of plans, but I don't see why you need a set of plans, something this simple. You hey, know? Jim, the, a way that this could be done, and more people have been adding in that they would like to get it too. Uh, one way we could do it is through our punch pass system, people can put in the money it takes to get the wood, maybe 15 bucks, 25 bucks, whatever it is, and then maybe do a group buy. And if you are interested in maybe cutting it to length or whatever, you know, we make kits or just break down the big pieces into small enough pieces that you give them to people. And then we schedule a Zoom session just like this, where you walk us through the assembly. Um, that's oh, a version. That, that would be a problem. Can we get in the that chat box if people would be interested in that kind of idea? Just be saying, building a kit that way where you basically get the materials through a group buy. And then you pick them up by swinging by the shop sometime to just uh, uh, have them delivered to you during a certain window of time. Uh, if you would put in the chat box if you're interested in that. Okay, we got some. That would, that would work for me. Okay, good, good. Okay. I'd be interested, but one thing is, I, if you need a planer to to finish off the wood, then I'd be stuck because I don't have one. Well, uh, the big piece of wood, obviously, it would be cut and, and planed. You'd still have to hand sand it, but other than that, it would be the dimensions that it's required. Oh, perfect. Everybody has a joiner and a planer, you know. Oh, man. Yeah, we've got lots of people expressing interest here. The list keeps going on and on. So uh, there's a certain amount of stuff that would need to be done when you have access to a jointer. If we could talk Jim into helping us out with those few things, but all the rest of the stuff that we should be able to do with hand tools and uh, in our own homes, he can just guide us through that. And this just seems so versatile. I mean, he just declamped it from the table in about 30 seconds, and I could just see him swinging over and hanging it on the wall, and it's out of the way. It's and out yet, of the way. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds really great. Um, are there other questions of Jim? Because we should, again, never let Jim off easy. <laughs> hey, Jim, uh, have, yeah. you seen, have you seen uh, Doug Lesner's uh, uh, portable bench like that? I, I don't know. I can't remember how different uh, Doug's, or how similar Doug's it is. Doug's bench is uh, Schwartz's design. And uh, um, that's the, the bench uh, plans that Chance lost, but I'm not bringing that up against Chance. <laughs> I, I have them. They just got a little bit burnt. <laughs> <laughs> no way. My dog ate them. We'll straighten those out. Uh, no, that, that bench is uh, brought on for a little different reason than this one. No, it, they're it, right here. <laughs> Bob Stevenson. Uh, Dale and several people have that bench. And it's basically for like when you do inlay, you want it higher up to your eyes and your hands. It's raised up from the bench. And it does work. And uh, we could do a class on that too eventually. Yeah. Any question? Your opportunity is uh, waning here in terms of people who ask Jim questions. I, I, got, a, I got a question. Uh, Jim, you had mentioned that the benches that are used at the uh, the county fair are weighted with, with sand. sandbags yep. or some some kind of weight. So the basic yep. bench that they use, I mean, it's not folding tables like oh no, they're, Costco. they're, 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 they're traditional. Else, right? They're some of them are a little lighter weight, but all of them are traditional heavy duty workbenches. But they all work better with sand. And every year we they.
sorry, Jim, I lost your audio. Yes, uh, okay, there it is. Next year, look at the fair, and we bring in sand every year. And you put in the bottom of the benches. Got it. All right, thank you. Assuming we have a fair next year. Yep, there's a fair next year. 2022. Postponed, right? <laughs> Okay, I like to say goodbye and thanks, and this is the, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, we can meet in person next time. Yeah, let's figure out how we get that kid uh, build going, but um, let's go ahead and uh, wind this down. I'm going to mute Chance just because he's whittling paper right now, but, uh, so this is just the latest example of being able to do a targeted tour. Frankly, when it, uh, came to chance he was able to take a, take a spin around and we got much more of a view of his we were seeing very very little of jim's and i'd like to ask if just to, to tease people with how vast an uh, empire you have there jim mike can you, we get you to do a 360 there yeah you can point it at at, <laughs> the, at the empire there uh well you can see i i have the original uh 16 inch bandsaw and spindle sander Sanders there. Actually, have a nice TV too. Uh, chop saw. Well, we've now only seen ninety degrees. Look, keep going around. Uh, oh, well, it, I'm in the way. We're sitting in the. Uh, there's one workbench, a traditional one. It's not as fancy as as uh, our friends. And there's another one on cabinets. And I use this one, but on cabinets, it's still not as stiff, and it will move on. So anything I do with hand joint is done on the one. It's stationary. And then I have a lathe and uh, all kinds of cabinets and toolboxes and uh, drill presses, and another bandsaw. And I guess that's something everybody should have is two bandsaws and it really <laughs> does work. <laughs> I, I get lazy, you know, don't like changing blades, but, uh, um, and there's Mike, he, my uh, technician here. Yeah. yeah, that's right, the hired help. The hired help, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I agree that Travis, you got to buy him a case of beer. <laughs> they let us do that. Um, just, and in, a, just behind, just behind Mike, what do you have as a table saw? I have a, a, a powermatic, and a joiner, and uh, a planer. And what's over there by the door? Oh, that's a dust collector. And, and I have a grandfather clock that you see the back of it that I'm about ninety percent done with. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but that's about it. Oh, that's all, yeah, that's huh? About. That's all. All right, folks. Well, the same amount of stuff is in the shop. <laughs> this, this, is, this is, and you can understand why it is that Jim has had a hand on keeping the shop's tools operating for so long. Uh, not only does he do work at Palomar, not only does he have his own vast shop here, but he's been a huge lead for us on the maintenance of tools for uh, the first couple of years of the shop. So uh, we got, got a tiny little snippet here of what's in his shop. And we'll take tours of other things because these are easier to do. It's just one topic and someone just needs a phone and the willingness to share and we can get it out there. So um, I think that pretty much winds it down. Let's ask if there are any other questions that people have for either Chance or Jim. And if not, then we'll wind it down. I had to stop and comb my hair there. <laughs> yeah, we saw the one go over. <laughs> <laughs> no, look at I haven't had a haircut in two months. I actually have hair. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for attending, and uh, see you later. Yeah, and thank you Thanks, to you, Jim. Jim. Thanks, Jim. Much appreciated, everybody. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. I like the fire hats. Nice fire hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a couple.